my yard I'm working all so hard This foliage is tough I think I've had it What are you doing? It's a Ed Sheeran video Hello and welcome to another episode of Embrace Your Outdoor Space. My name's Tommy Cross and in this episode we're not going to be looking at mowing. We are going to be instead turning our attention to the peripheries of our garden because during the summer we can get very caught up in what's going on on the ground, maintaining and manicuring and mowing our lawn and often forgetting about our garden hedges, trees and the peripheries of our lawn. And this is a perfect example of what's happening. I got so caught up enjoying mowing that my hedges are starting to encroach into the garden. Now there's two reasons why I've left them this long. One, purely because I've forgotten about them and I've been too busy mowing and looking after the kids and cleaning the house and tidying up and all the other bits and pieces. That's just for my wife's benefit if she ever watches this episode. But the other reason is that this hedgerow was actually home to a myriad of birds. We've had sparrows, we've had blue tits, we've had great tits in here as well for the first time ever and they've all been nesting in and amongst the protection of the hawthorn hedgerow here. So it has been left deliberately somewhat in order to make sure that those birds are not disturbed during their nesting. But we have noticed over the last couple of weeks, a lot of fledgling chicks departing from the hedgerows. So now is time to turn my attention and tackle the hedgerows. And in this episode, we're gonna show you some easy ways to make sure your garden doesn't look rough around the hedges and how to avoid hacking at your hedgerow and making sure you cut it back efficiently and effectively. First up, what tool for the task? Well, we're all familiar with these. Head shears. Now on a hedgerow like this, the fun can get very boring very, very quickly. I'm having to expend a lot of effort. I'm not making particularly fast progress. And I can soon find myself cutting corners instead of cutting the hedge. And before you know it, I've got wayward cuts and a wonky looking hedgerow. And the better it looks, the more likely you are to maintain it constantly. The other issue I have when using something like this so I've got limited reach. Now I've already got short stubby Tyrannosaurus rex arms, so every centimeter counts. Especially when I'm using head shears on a haw ah, on a hawthorn hedge, that wasn't even for comic value. And the more I have to stretch, the more laborious it becomes, and the more emasculating it is for me too. So when it comes to tackling your hedges or trimming your bush, the old school method certainly doesn't make the cut you might need some power. You could opt for a corded hedge trimmer, but you're piloting a cutting tool with a cable behind you. What could possibly go wrong? Or there's the option for petrol. There is an alternative, and all you need to do is charge up, click in, and power up. And that wasn't as smooth as I wanted it to be quick anatomical breakdown as to why I prefer a battery powered head trimmer. Firstly, no cord and cable. I've got the flexibility, I've got the reach. I don't have to constantly keep checking behind me for a cable. I also don't have to contend with the weight of a petrol engine, all the fuel and all the fumes when operating. It's also much quieter. I can still talk over my head trimmer and I can hear others. It makes for a much safer working environment. It also means I'm not gonna annoy the neighbors as well. It's also nice to know that if I was left-handed or ambidextrous, I can operate it quickly and effectively thanks to the D-loop handle and trigger system. And what's more, if I need to adjust my hedge trimmer for additional comfort when cutting my hedgerow, I can adjust the handle position and trigger position to make cutting my hedgerow as comfortable as possible. The other thing I've got is some impressive length. I no longer have to worry about being short changed with my short arms. I've got a 51 centimeter high visibility bar here. Now there's a practical reason why this bar is painted red. It means I'm always aware of where my bar is. So it means if I am cutting my hedgerow, I'm not going to be plunging too deep and risk damaging my foliage or taking great big chunks out of the center of my hedgerow. I'm also mindful of where that cutting blade is at all times, a nice additional safety feature on top. We've actually got ducks nesting in the long grass at the back of the garden as well. They're becoming more and more tame by the day. So we just keep putting out bird food for them. Here he is, here's the male. A valid point here actually. 
This is why it is essential to check your hedgerow to make sure that you haven't got a late brood in the hedgerows. And if you are gonna tackle your hedges, go easy on them, as I'm doing today, as you're just taking off that flouncier foliage along the exterior of the hedgerow, instead of getting deep into the thicker foliage, because you might ruffle a few feathers. Before you get too carried away, goggles, gloves, and dress for the occasion. Now, when it comes to cutting your hedgerow and operation, I'll do the front face, bottom to top first, and then my tops I'll do back to front. That way I can keep an eye on the front level and make sure that the top level meets at perfect height. The last thing you want to be doing is to be tempted to go too hard, too fast, too soon. Imagine if you're at the barbers or hairdressers, they cannot put that hair back on if they take too much off too soon. You cannot do that with your hedgerow. You're gonna to have to wait for it to grow back. So light trimming works slowly and effectively. And as tempting as it may be to speed up the process and take off too much, don't. The other virtue of working back to front is it means that I can pull away a lot of those cuttings as I'm making that pass over the surface. Less dead cut branches sat on top of my hedgerow. Whilst they're not gonna do damage, as they die off, they're gonna start looking brown and unsightly. So the more I can take off and take to the ground, the better my hedgerow and better my finish. So why am I cutting back my hedgerow? Well, two reasons. One, aesthetically, it's gonna make a big difference. I'm no longer getting that sense that the garden's growing in and reducing my visibility out into the garden. It's gonna tidy everything up. The other thing is to promote new growth, especially throughout the spring and summer months. The hedge is in full flourish. So the more we cut it back, the more it's gonna start sending out new shoots and new growth. So the more growth it puts on, the happier, the healthier the hedge. And you can see I'm actually tapering the top of this hedgerow to a slight point. That's two reasons for this. One, again, aesthetics. The other is to make sure it gets maximum amount of light, both at the top of the hedgerow and at the bottom. Virtue of tapering the hedgerow to a thinner top means that the bottom isn't starved of light and it can give you a full, healthy foliage across the whole front and the top of your hedgerow. You'll also notice this stuff up there. It's called British Summertime in all its glory. A thick mass of gray clouds. That is perfect hedge trimming weather. It's not too hot, I'm not gonna get tired. It means I've got less flies flitting around the surface, less likely to get stung or bitten. And it also means that I'm not having to contend with the glare of the sun, especially if you're working on a higher hedgerow and you're having to look upwards, that glare of the sun can be unrelenting. This wonderful, glorious summer weather that we have actually makes for smoother, more effective operation. Now, only a matter of minutes, and we've already tidied up and tickled over quite a lot of the hedgerow. But there is another job to do because there's a lot of loose foliage still left to be removed from the top and the side of the hedgerow. Now, there's a couple of ways to do that. You can use your hands, but I don't really want to keep firing my hands over a load of spikes. I mentioned this is hawthorn, and that's going to start getting pretty unenjoyable very, very quickly. You could use a brush or a rake and just agitate the hedgerow to flick those bits of foliage off, or you could blow them off. That's gonna take ages. If only there was another way. I think there might be. Oh yeah, there's a leaf blower there. Is it obvious that this is a Greenworks video? Not in the slightest. But this is a sensible point, to be honest. The fact that I can take a battery out of one tool and then attach it to another, in this case, a 48 volt tool, bags of power, really does make for much easier maintenance of the garden. Now, when it comes to the cuttings, inevitably you are going to make some mess. In this case, we've got quite the mess as well because this is hawthorn, thorn by name, thorn by nature. It could be even worse. You could be tackling something like a pyracanthus, which has huge spear-like needles on it. And the last thing you want to do is be gathering those up with bare hands. That's where the gloves come into account, but you can make it easier on yourself when it comes to collecting. A simple tarpaulin laid out underneath your feet will help you alleviate having to get down on your hands and knees and get up close and personal with any spikes and thorns. And it also makes for efficient collection and removal of all your waste. But I go one further and let the tools do the work for me. Take my battery out, 
grab my mower. And today, my mower isn't going to be picking up grass. It's going to be mowing up my mess. Now, this isn't about me being lazy. This is about working smart, not hard, because we're doing two things. Not only are we gathering up, we're also going to then pulverize all of those cuttings down into smaller particles. The smaller the particle, the quicker it's going to break down when I put this onto the compost heap. And something woody like hawthorn wouldn't necessarily normally break down particularly quickly. So the finer the matter is, the better the grade of compost that we're going to get. But we've only tackled the hedges, so it's onto the edges. In our next video, we're going to be looking at line trimming and brush cutting and making sure that we maintain the peripheries, not just at height, but down low as well. Now, if you're thinking about tackling some tasks in your outdoor space and looking for some tools to tackle your terrain, don't forget you can always check the link out at the end of the video to find out more about the tools we featured in this video and a whole lot more. Thanks for watching. Looks pretty good, that, doesn't it? Still the same battery? Yep. Still charge left. We've done that whole length from bottom to top.